Hello, let's answer some homework questions. Uh, here we go. All right, so the first question that I saw had to do with long run uh, average total cost. So this dark red line right here, this is the long run average total cost. So this is just a cost model. Um, that's all it is. So it's just showing that from uh, quantity zero out to quantity whatever that is if you'd like to think of it as a thousand it's a thousand or whatever um, it is getting cheaper to produce more and this is because every the firm in the long run can choose to move its capital resources towards something that's cheaper okay uh, eventually they get to some point where they're not actually getting any cost savings uh, but in order to scale up or increase their um, sales or, or production uh, they're going to need to upgrade their capital okay so that's that's what you're seeing here and then eventually they get so big and we get diseconomies of scale it's also sometimes called that um, it just means it's getting more expensive to produce uh, more so you can think about this like um, maybe well in the famous example is GE in the 1980s so GE in the 1980s produced pretty much everything um, all the industrial products, a lot of consumer products, they owned NVC, they had a financial company, they just they had so much that they were producing and they realized that uh, they could actually produce less and save some of those costs. So they closed down anything that wasn't number one or number two. Um, and some firms will do this, right? They, they grew too fast. I think about maybe the mattress firm uh, recently. Uh, kept buying out different places and they got really, really big and they realized we got to cut back on our on our uh, cost, so um, any firm can really be in here, but this is just about their costs. Okay, and and there are marginal cost constraints that that work in with this, but this is just the average cost of doing business. So that's all this model does. Okay, all right, next one. Um, okay, so this uh, let's see, have we filled everything in right? Uh, yep. So those are all right, and then. Marginal revenue looks good. Okay, um, so if this firm was picking a single price, what price would it pick? So it's going to produce up to where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, uh, which is going to be at the seventh or the third unit, rather. Sorry. So, um, so at the third unit, they're not going to produce the fourth unit because they're going to lose a dollar on that. So they're going to produce the third unit. They're going to charge a price of seven because they're a monopoly, but that's not what it says. It says perfectly price discriminate. How large is the consumer surplus? So what does this actually mean? Here's what it means. Um, this first person is going to pay nine. The second person is going to pay eight. The third person is going to pay seven. What it merely means is every person is going to pay exactly what they value the, the product for. So this is basically an eBay type model, right? So on eBay, uh, you pay exactly what you think it's worth because you're bidding in an auction against somebody else. So if you don't think the thing's worth, say, four bucks, you'll stop. You won't you won't bid anymore, and that's where you stop, right? So anyway, perfectly priced discrimination means everybody's going to pay their same price. They're going to produce uh, right up to here. They'll produce that fifth unit, um, and so each of these people will pay a different price consumer surplus will be zero because if you recall the consumer surplus is the difference between the uh, what the consumer is willing to pay which is demand and what they actually do pay so that since that difference is zero um, that's what they're going to produce alright let me see what the other questions were um, okay answered the economies of scale um, okay okay marginal revenue curve inside Okay, so uh, what's going on here? Okay, we can kind of look at this one here. And uh, sorry about that background noise there. Hang on a second. Okay, so we've got a regular demand curve. Okay, and the reason that marginal revenue is inside of it is in order to sell more product, okay, the monopoly has to actually lower their price. Okay. The re we don't draw the, the marginal revenue curve on a s regular supply and demand curve because the market's competitive and so each firm is just going to sell up to where the supply meets the demand. But a monopoly can think below more specifically about their price. So they can choose any of these prices. Well, if they move from a price of $24 down to $20, okay, if they're a single price monopolist, 
that, that's they're going to decrease the additional revenue or the rev the additional revenue is going to change based on that now if you're into calculus um, this is a this is a function right here and so marginal revenue marginal means additional so it is the change in total revenue caused by the lowering of the price okay so total revenue is going up all the way until marginal revenue goes uh, negative but it's uh, but it's the rate of change in the total revenue function. Okay, so that's 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 how to. That's why it'll always be there. So it's always going to start uh, where demand starts, and then it'll always be in the inside here. Okay, so let's look at this particular question. Uh, government regulated this market so that marginal cost equals demand. So um, they would do this. This is called allocative efficiency. So in a reg in a typical market. The marginal cost curve is really like a supply curve. Okay, so for a firm to produce more quantity, they're going to need the price to go up a little bit. And lots of firms will be interacting on that regular supply graph. But again, this is a monopoly, so it's not going to happen. Well, a firm's never going to pick that because marginal cost is above marginal revenue. Okay, so a single firm won't choose that. They're going to produce back to here, uh, and then single price will choose it up here. Well, there, there's going to be this dead weight loss or this loss in efficiency. Or just thought of a different way. This is a monopoly jacking up the prices and selling fewer units. Okay, so we've got less of a market here. So a government might be concerned about this. Um, they usually don't care when it comes to uh, cheap things, but um, stuff that maybe is a little more, you know, consequential, like like uh, natural gas or power generation. They have economists on staff for the government, and then economists that work for the, the individual firms to try to figure this out. So they might say, um, you know, you're allowed to charge, you know, the allocative efficiency price, which in this case you have um, picked out is is 17 here, um, which uh, which now I'm looking at isn't one of the answers. So uh, let's see. So I'll go in and, and fix that one. Uh, so it's another typo. I don't know why I keep finding so many of these, or you guys keep finding so many of these typos. So. Um, you have the right answer. I'll, I'll go in and fix that. Okay. Um, also, when I was looking at a quiz, uh, there was a monopsony question. I pulled all of those out. So don't worry about those. We will learn that next week. All right. Last one. This is another typo. It really should say what quantity does the monopolist realize? Um, so let's let's do this one. I'm going to do it in Excel here. Um, I think I answered that question. Okay. So let's just do this in Excel. Uh, so if you haven't done this yet. Okay. So we got quantity, we got price, this is the demand function. Okay. And as I was saying, this is a function, it's an algebraic function, and then the derivative of total revenue, which is this times this, is this. Okay, so if you like calculus. Anyway, so we know what do we know about fixed costs? We know that fixed costs do not change, so I'm just gonna copy uh, fixed costs all the way down. Okay. Total costs are fixed costs plus variable costs. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that all the way down. Marginal cost is the difference between uh, one level of total cost divided by the quantity. And in this case, quantity is changing by one, so it's always going to just change by one. So that first one, we went from, um, actually it's, it's 20. So at the first uh, unit there, we had 20, and we go to uh, 25. So that first one's going to be five. The next one is this minus this. So this is the marginal cost uh, formula here. So I'll just copy that all the way down. And then total revenue is quantity times price. So it's the number of units times the price we sell them at. And this is why marginal revenue is inside of, of uh, the demand curve. Okay, Because this is the demand curve. This gives us total revenue. And then in order to sell more units, I have to lower my price. So that's kind of where this comes from. So that first one's going to be 90 because we, if we sold zero, then it doesn't matter what the price was. So that was the one before that. Okay. So it's this minus this. Okay. Okay. So we got that. So just analyze it traditionally. So traditionally, Single price monopolist is going to go to where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So that's come down here. It's 20 and 20. I'm going to just hide that column for a second. So 20 and 20, we can see those right there. Okay. Um, and then they're going to charge a price of 55. Okay. So uh, that would be how to, how to solve that. 
if um, if they were you know saying you have to do uh, productive efficiency and then you can do a price above that they're gonna look at this column okay so that's that's how to calculate that and let me just make sure that I answered the question ah so what price does a monopolist realize that any further price decreases will uh, decrease its total revenue so that's going to be down here okay so it's going to be um, at price 45 and uh, the way the question was written is a typo it should have said quantity 10 but um, 45 because if they lower the price down to 40 they're now making less revenue okay so that's how to do that and I uh, hope that helps